We've all seen the scene play out. Someone's upset and insists that they're not. I'm not angry! We've all seen that scene. Sure seems like you're angry. And we know that anger is a bad thing. There's a very famous letter attributed to the Ramban, the Igeris Ramban. Some have a custom to study it every day. Some editions of the Siddur, Tfilas Kolpe, for example, has the Igeris Ramban printed on the inside cover. And in that one page letter that he supposedly wrote to his son, he says that one should particularly try to avoid anger. It's the worst of all attributes to cause a person to sin. Why is anger the worst of all the attributes to cause a person to sin? Because when a person is angry, a person loses self-control. And we've all seen it when a person gets angry. A person becomes adamant about his or her position and really is not in a position to in a calm, rational way, listen to what others have to say. And when a person is consumed by anger, then a person cannot properly serve God. Because to serve Hashem, you have to have mindfulness, and you have to be appropriately submissive. But when a person is angry, there's no place for those attitudes, for those emotions. A person is only thinking about himself, herself, about feeling aggrieved about his or her feelings. And so therefore, anger is And so it's kind of surprising, therefore, to read in our Parsha about Yaakov's reaction. Yaakov had a very, very tough life. And one particularly tough chapter of his life is the time that he spent in the home of his father-in-law, Lavan. Lavan tricked him from day one. Lavan wanted to marry Rachel. He ended up first with Leah, then with Rachel. He ended up with Bila and Zilpa, And Lavan tricked him at every point, at every turn. The situation got so unbearable that at some point he told his wives, we're out of here. And he just left without saying goodbye. And Lavan gives chase, and Lavan searches him, wants to find out who took his idols, who took his truffin. And Lavan gives him a whole spiel that, how could you do this to me? Huh, can't believe it. Me? I'm such a great guy. And finally, Yaakov's had it. He's done. And the Pasuk tells us, Vayarev Belovan, that Yaakov fought with Lavan. Nice, quiet Yaakov, who was Ishtav Yosheva Holland, not Yisrael, not the fighter who fights with the angel in the middle of the night. But Yaakov, the sweet Yaakov, all of a sudden, he becomes like a tiger. Vayarev. And Vayan Yaakov, and he starts to lace into to Lavan. He says, what have I ever done wrong? And he goes on and on and on and on about the difficult life that he had in Lavan's home. Of course Yaakov was right. Of course Lavan was wrong. But still, don't we expect more from Yaakov? Don't we expect that the great Yaakov Avinu will not stoop to the low level of Lavan? Of course, Lavan is a Rami, a Ramai, he's a trickster. Of course, he's not an honest, decent person. But don't get into the mud pit with him. Go on, do what you need to do. But what is this? I think that actually it doesn't say Vayichar Af, Lavan, that he grew angry. Vayarev Belavan. This was very calculated. This was very premeditated. There are times in life where you have to display emotion in order to convey a point. I remember once, not that I had too many opportunities, 
But I remember once being at the at the stipler in Bnei Brak, and I wasn't exactly inside, but I sort of caught part of the the action. There was some commotion, and this the, this great quiet rabbi, Rav Yisrael Kanievsky, Chaim Kanievsky's father, author of the Kilos Yaakov, great Talmud Chacham and a tzaddik, was screaming at someone. And after this person left, people were shocked. They'd never seen him scream at somebody. And they said, what happened? He said, oh, I wasn't angry. He said, it's just that person doesn't hear unless you scream. So I had to communicate with him in the way that he could understand. And Yaakov Avinu tried the nice guy approach for two decades. It didn't work. And at some point, Yaakov realized that the only way he has any chance of getting through is to tough is to talk tough. And that's what he does. And truthfully, it's certainly on the surface of it, it doesn't seem to hurt her to help a whole lot because Lavan says to Yaakov, Habanos Bnosai, the daughters are my daughters, Vabanin Banai, the sons are my sons, Vatsom Soni and the sheep is, is my sheep. And everything you see is mine. Disgusting, outrageous. So, Lavan, it's not like he was so quick to be apologetic. But he realizes that Yaakov is not going to back down. That much he realizes. And ultimately he has to say, Let's make a treaty. Let's, let's make a pact. Let's, let's work things out. Lavan has to try to save face in the presence of his countrymen, in the, in the presence of his henchmen. And so he's blustery on the outside, but he recognizes there's no way that he's going to convince Yaakov to come back home, and therefore he wants to have a peace treaty. There are times in life when we have to talk tough. There are times in life when we have to, in a premeditated way, use our words carefully. Sometimes when we discipline our children, we have to say, I'm angry, I'm disappointed, and to indicate my sense of disappointment, I am going to have to use a, a harsh voice. A person shouldn't just scream or yell because they're out of control. That's not, that's not appropriate, that's not healthy, and it's certainly not constructive. But, if uh, to make a point a young child doesn't understand and they run into the street and you pull the child out and you say, listen, you did something that was dangerous and I'm going to tell you in a, in a loud voice that it was dangerous so you won't do it next time. And you say, danger! The child will cry, the child will be sad, the child will understand. And next time the child either won't do it again or will think twice before running into the street. So... All the emotions that we are gifted with are ultimately to be used in the service of Hashem. And as we continue to face this pandemic, and let me remind people that there is a tremendous uptick in our county, in our state, and we unfortunately are probably looking at some very tough weeks ahead. It's really important for people to be vigilant. People need to continue to wear masks, to socially distance, to not share social uh, events. Even outdoors, it creates a, a problem. Backyard minyanim, all of these things, besides whatever health dangers they may pose, they create a sense of Chalal Hashem. I get the communications, so I know, from people in our neighborhood who see these things, and even if they're technically within the guidelines, they create a sense that perhaps there are members of our community who aren't sensitive and who aren't careful and who are putting others at risk. So it's very important to maintain our vigilance. Hopefully, as vaccines become available, hopefully we will turn a corner. But it's going to take some time before that happens, and we need everybody's cooperation. And so sometimes as the fatigue and the frustration becomes compounded, it's easier for people to get angry. And overall, it's not healthy. 
because anger is too often a loss of control. And that's not healthy for anyone. Controlled anger in the form that Yaakov Avinu exhibited is acceptable. But overall, let us be vigilant. Let us work on ourselves. Even if we're forced to spend more time indoors, even if we have to be more isolated, please, let's try to contain ourselves and let's try to contain our anger. And hopefully, we will have the opportunity not to exhibit anger, but to exhibit simcha with the ultimate gula made come and here, Amen.